Good afternoon. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Diane, in particular, for uh, inviting me once again to this great event to somewhat celebrate, at least, what uh, you have accomplished for uh, in getting Entergy to close Pilgrim, although not yet. Um, I would, given my sh uh, short few minutes, I would want to get down to the few um, things that I want to talk about. Um, first, uh, although the economic considerations uh, weighed heavily on the utility to announce the closure of Pilgrim, the, I think you should take credit for your constant pressure and vigilance of so many people and so many organizations in Cape Cod and Massachusetts overall to um, bring this decision around. Now, my uh, few points that I want to make are primarily about sort of counterfactuals or counter arguments about why Pilgrim cannot be shot now. Let's say that one of the arguments that are being put forward is that it will make a huge impact on the electricity supply of Massachusetts, and it was touched upon by a, a previous speaker as well. Now, Pilgrim, its share of generation in Massachusetts is about 13 percent. It's 5 percent is the installed capacity, and given that the load factor of nuclear plants are high, so in the generation side, it's about 13 percent. Now, compare that with uh, Vermont Yankee that also closed. Now, that plant supplied 70 percent of Vermont's capacity, and we are able to manage that somehow. And uh, another thing I notice is that regarding the shutdown, the lights will go out, is that uh, Pilgrim actually shut down for three years between 1986 and 1989. How did we manage then? So we are able to manage. There is enough spare capacity. There is enough ability to bring hydropower from Quebec that we can manage the situation. So it's not an argument that really stands up. And also, we have now global experience in shutting down plants. Germany, it's a greatly energy intensive country like ours here, and it shut down all its nuclear plants. How can they do that? I mean, they have a tremendous manufacturing base. They're able to keep their mills and, and factories running, and buses and trains running on time. And uh, so there is experience, and, and Japan too, although. Japan is trying to go back on nuclear once again, very, very unfortunately, but it shut down all its plants after Fukushima. So that argument really doesn't stand up, as I said. And then the question of safety, as Diane said. I mean, that's the main thing, that nuclear plants are inherently unsafe. Yes, there haven't been a huge number of accidents, but accidents do happen, and they are catastrophic, starting from the TMI, the Three Mile Island, to Chernobyl, and then to Fukushima. My visit to Fukushima last year just impacted me tremendously when I saw these cities and towns around Fukushima, Daiichi. 160,000 people were evacuated. 136,000 people are still displaced in the Fukushima prefecture alone. Now, people say, well, nobody died from radiation. Well, yes, it is not a nuclear bomb, so intense radiation did not kill anyone on site. But there have been large number of deaths that are indirectly related to the um, to the evacuation and the disaster. And, and the Japan Times did a very good article recently about that. Um, <clears throat> so I think that we have to be very concerned in terms of when it comes to one of the worst safe plants in this country is allowed to operate for all this time, that the question of a, a potential for an accident and then the uncertainty of the impact of low-level radiation on people. We don't know. Just two days ago, New York Times published this story about a Fukushima victim who is now came down with, with, uh, with uh, leukemia. Now, the interesting thing is he is not the person who had the most dose um, uh, that, he, uh, that he received. He had one of the lower doses. He came down with, the, with, with, with leukemia. So it's, it's not known what low-level radiation for long periods of time will do to people. We just don't have that understanding to a great extent. And then I'll go to the safety culture of nuclear industry. It's not a good one. My former colleague, Alison McFarlane, she was the chair of the Nuclear Regulatory Commission until recently. So she came to MIT 
uh, uh, two days ago to give a talk. And I asked her about uh, Fukushima and also about the problems uh, of NRC. And she said, one of the things that happened after Fukushima is there was a task force that was set up by the NRC to look at how our plants can respond, especially Mark I and Mark II, the GE plants of which one of this is in, in Pilgrim. Uh, and she said that US is the only country that has not implemented vented filters for the containment vessel, which acts as a relief valve for if there is a pressure buildup. And the other country is one of the two countries. The other country is Mexico. And, uh, and this was done primarily because of industry pressure. So the industry is not about safety, uh, unfortunately. And as we all know, and you know very well, much more than me, that Entergy has not been forthcoming in its dealings with the people, in giving people in information. So now I say that two things, is that now the decision is done, they're gonna close it, and we, 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 we make sure that it closes down sooner than later, that we urge that, that Entergy change its tack, and it really work transparently with people in the community. It, and we can draw a lot of experience, for instance, when we shut down military bases all around the country, and the, the communication between the communities and the, and, the, and the bases is very similar because there's a lot of classified material, classified information in military bases. So now you have a nuclear plant which is also in, operates in a lot of secrecy and we need a lot of that. And finally I'll say that actually in a positive note that we act, here we have a tremendous opportunity as a technologist I can say this that this should not be thought of as all downside by, by, by the industry. Entergy actually, believe it or not, in Mississippi, has a program called the Bright Future Plan. And there, they are saying that Mississippi must go solar, and there is a municipal level solar plant that Entergy is promoting. I was just doing a Google search and I just found this. And it's very interesting, the solar and the wind, of course we're doing in terms of rate of growth in Massachusetts, it's quite high. And that's the thing, learning from the German experience, learning from the Chinese experience, and the price of solar panels are dropping tremendously. So, so we, can, we can definitely do it with alternative energies and not rely on nuclear, on, a, on not only in Massachusetts, but globally. And for all that, Massachusetts and Cape Cod will be a safer place. Thank you.